Hello, my name is Liam and welcome to the Commander Lurpak channel. In today's episode, I'll be adding further details to the ruined building, such as pipes, wires, ruined furniture, sandbags, trees, and of course, some dead Imperial Guardsmen. Um, so I hope you enjoy today's episode and thanks for watching. To start, I shall go through the materials I'm using in today's episode. First of all, we have some matchsticks. These are really useful in terrain building to create things like ladders, fences, and just general debris. Secondly, we have lollipop sticks. These are great because of the natural grain of the wood, giving you a realistic wood effect on whatever you use them in. Then we have some paper straws, which can be used as pipes and other detailing. Also some old electrical cabling from broken chargers, etc. This will ironically be used for representing power cables and wires on the terrain. Corrugated cardboard is next, which looks really great as sheet metal once painted up and weathered. Then using large grain gel, I shall add some further texture to the rubble and debris. Tacky glue to stick anything you don't need to dry too quickly. Lastly, Mod Podge Matte Sealer. This is really important to seal in all the soluble products before painting. To add more texture to the ruined building and the rubble, I'm using large grain gel. It creates a smaller debris size in the rubble, representing the more finer rubble. I thought this a good choice as the gel dries very hard and strong whilst keeping its grainy texture. This also fills in any big gaps you have missed in the rubble nice and easily. I apply the gel with a small brush to create little piles of dirt in the corners of the building too. This helps to blend the hard edges of the foam board together. To create the pipes, I'm using a craft knife to cut the paper straws into varying shapes and sizes. These will be used to represent broken pipes in the building. Then using tacky glue, I secure them in place amongst the rubble. Here you can see the dirty, gritty texture the large grain gel creates on the rubble. This really helps to blend together the larger pieces of the rubble into the terrain. To break up all the concrete rubble in the building, I wanted to add some broken furniture and debris to it. Using lollipop sticks and tacky glue, I made a wooden frame that could have been part of a table or maybe a door. And now using the cutters I'm weathering the piece so that it fits in better with the ruined aesthetic of the building and does not look too pristine and out of place. I then decided to make a more intact piece of furniture. I wanted to have something that had somehow survived the entire building collapsing around it, but it was still there albeit battered. Using a guardsman for scale and the lollipop sticks again, I made a small bookcase, sanding down the wood pieces that I had cut so that they looked more manufactured. I stuck them together with tacky glue again. I was happy with the outcome and I plan on adding small scraps of paper to the shelves at a later stage to represent some destroyed books. I think this will add a bit of character to the building and make it feel like people lived in it. To create a realistic looking sheet metal, I'm using corrugated cardboard. This is a great texture and looks really good once painted up and weathered. Also it handily comes in a lot of parcels in the packaging, so it's quite easy to get hold of. Using a craft knife, I add some wear and tear to the pieces, such as cutting dents and holes to blend it into the ruined theme. And then using tacky glue, I secure it in place.
I wanted there to be a lot of debris in this building, but you can add as much or as little of the different debris to your buildings as befits your aesthetic. To show the military strategic importance the building would have had in the city, I wanted to include some casualties and abandoned military equipment in the ruin. The sandbags will be great for putting on window ledges to create a firing position. The LAS gun is the most common firearm so I couldn't leave them out. Then some more abandoned Imperial Guard supplies. And I decided to include a Terminator I had lying around to give you a sense that even a mighty space marine has fallen in this carnage. And the fight has gone so badly his precious armour and gene seed has been left forgotten in the rubble. I then stuck down the pieces using super glue. This can be quite fiddly, so a pair of tweezers can come in handy as I found out the hard way. I tried to add the pieces in a way that created little dramatic moments and scenes that told a story about the previous battles that had waged in this ruin and the cost of them. Here are some of the little scenes I added. A fire position, an unlucky guardsman, and a sniper spot on the roof. Adding the wires to the building is pretty straightforward. All you need to do is strip off the casing using a craft knife to show some of the exposed wire underneath. Then when you're happy with this, glue it into position in the ruined building, which will help give the building a more damaged look. I wasn't going to add lights to this build, but after taking apart two small reading lamps I couldn't resist. I painted the bulbs orange for a moody lighting, and then bent some hair clips to size to secure them. This would allow me to remove the lights at a later date to change the batteries. Using Mod Podge I'm going to seal Using my now spill Mod Podge, yes I'm an idiot, I'm going to give the entire ruin a coat. It's important to seal the soluble materials so that when I come to paint them later they don't go soggy and lose their integrity and it just helps to seal everything in and protect it. That's all I had time for in today's episode so I shall leave you with a little video of the lights in action in both daylight and darkness. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode.